welcome back to the supplementary election. So, gentlemen, we're talking about uh, the section of the law that was talking yes. about election offenses. You know, they, what, what's, what's really interesting in this is, you know, the fact that, you know, uh, it'll be like duplicating efforts yes. on the one hand, but then duplicating effort, I think maybe from Mr. Lugu's argument, is it'll give it ex you know, expedited action, you know, yeah. if a, 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 an election petitions, you know, elect, elect, electoral offenses tribunal, just as yeah. we have electoral yeah. election yeah. tribunal, election, election petitions uh, tribunal, tribunal, should also have election offenses Let me just tribunal. give <laughs> you, you the floor. Let me just give a laconic, very fast example. Since 2000, we've had a new regime of anti-corruption laws. ICPC was created by an act in 2000. In 2004, we have the uh, EFCC Establishment Act. And since that time, these bodies have been prosecuting, you know, uh, criminal offenses, anti-corruption cases, right? Now, there's a felt need to have a special anti-corruption court. And there's a bill to that effect that is sent to the National Assembly. That bill has not been passed into law. It's one of the bills that are still there. The point I'm making is that these bodies have been prosecuting regardless of the fact that we didn't have a special a court. court. They were going to the regular courts. They were prosecuting in states where those who were put on trial used to argue that the EFCC being a federal yeah, agency didn't have the power to prosecute in state or prosecute state offenses. Our courts have said, no, you can't even raise that. You can't even talk about fiat. In one of the case, recent cases, you know, uh, FRN and Olagunju, the court said that. You, that it is not in your mouth to even be talking about fiat. Face your charges, <laughs> right? That's the beauty of it. I'm saying that before we can pivot, before we can start making an argument about let's have a special, the laws that are there, implement these laws first. That's my contention. I agree with my learned friend that, yes, there's a felt need, but the provisions have not even been implemented. You've not operated the provisions. And so until you do that and then see the inadequacies of current provisions, you cannot legitimately, in my view, be making the argument that we need this commission. This body is empowered. INEC is empowered to do this. Budget for it. Recruit lawyers to prosecute. Get your report from police who's claim that they've arrested some people. Prosecute after election. That's the point I'm making. So but that we don't make, we just don't think that our, the problem here is that simple problems are complicated set up by committee. our unwillingness <laughs> to even try. And then we say that it's so complex. Look, living is not this complex. We can make progress without just bureaucratizing everything, setting up commissions, creating signing kiosks, and then looking for who is the person, who is the incorruptible person that is going to head the commission. Is it going to be a retired judge? Is it going to be a retired or a nurse, uh, a next person? Perhaps we are going to get Jega to do that. We don't need all those. That's my contention. Make the laws that are available work first. Let me, let me add to this quickly. I, I would read the sections for clarity. You find out that in, in other crimes, when things happen, when a crime is committed, they deal with it. But here, we we'll set up committee to first and foremost look at the crime, and then, oh, do we need a special court to prosecute this crime? Do we need a special commission to handle it? At that time, you know... We are certain the immediate and remote courses. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and you really don't... They not set up another and, committee another to, committee to verify the report. And then if generate you, a white paper. A white paper. <laughs> section 144, subsection 2. The Attorney General of the State concerned acting in person or through any of his legal officer or the Attorney General of the Federation acting in person or through any of his legal officer may represent the commission and the office, officers referred to in subsection 1 of this section with the written consent or authority of the commission. That means even if you must represent the commission in prosecuting these offenses, it is the commission that, will, that must consent. They must donate that pass to you. If you now go to section 150, subsection, from, starting from subsection 1, it says, an offense committed under this act shall be triable in a magistrate court 
or a high court of a state in which the offense is committed or the Federal Capital Authority of Abuja. Subsection 2. A prosecution under this act shall be under undertaken by the legal officers of the commission or any legal practitioner appointed by the commission. And, and so already the commission has passed by virtue of these sections of the Electoral Act to prosecute electoral, electoral offenses. If you now say, oh no, the electoral offenses are too much, and so I need a special commission to begin to investigate what, even in spite of the fact that yes, you have, you've identified that there are offenses, even the little ones, how many have you prosecuted? We've had cases where INEC has identified that some of his staffs also you know, collaborated with politicians. Police investigated, had it, handed in reports. What has INEC done also to ensure that they prosecute those staffs, prosecute the politicians involved, to serve as a deterrent to people who would contemplate such crime? But the issue here is, we always, just like we, have, we, we now want to unbundle everything, look at EFCC. Do you know that there are some matters that people intentionally duplicate? The matter EFCC has, um, the police has a special fraud unit. Mm -hmm. The EFCC investigating the same crime that EFCC also are investigating. If we had empowered the police, meanwhile you have the police, some of the police officers drawn, uh, some of the EFCC officials drawn from the police. Mangu is a police officer. So why didn't we empower the police also train and retrain and create you know, departments and employ men and materials they to ensure have that jurisdiction in states. Exactly, but no, we will create special commission for it. Okay. We will create ICPC. We will now say, okay, let's create a special court to begin to look into those issues. We identify, we agree also quickly that the we we are short of of labor in the judiciary in Lagos High Court, in Lagos State. You have about seventy something courts in Lagos. All the cases go to those seventy something courts. And in some cases, you get to court, you have about 30, 30 something cases on a list. Why don't you employ more hands to deal with this? We won't do it. We say, no, let's create special court to deal with employment only. Now you have special court Lagos dealing with. You have less than 200 judges. You know, By my record. So, we need to, what we need to do is, there is all, all of these issues are already identified. There are laws created. It is not lack of laws, it is not lack of. Um, a commission that is the problem. It is the lack of the will power for us to employ men and materials that will do the job. Okay, let, let's let's take this back to Mr. Oligo. How do you react to this, uh, Mr. Oligo? I think, I think we are looking at the same ball. Probably we are looking at it from different sides. Um, and uh, um, the question, I think the big question is, do we need an electoral reform? That's the big question. That and that is where we should start this argument. The, the way our electoral system is currently constituted, is there a need to rejig it? And anybody who is actually um, realistic about our electoral process will say yes, there is need for a reform of our electoral system. Why do we need electoral reform? Because the system is not working the way it is designed to work. And individuals have actually decided to scuttle the process and ensure that the process doesn't work. I concede that, that that provision is in the Electoral Act. But if you also look at it very well, one of the opening paragraphs is may. And we know that under the law of interpretation, there is a difference between shall and may. But let's not even go to that. Since the Electoral Act was adopted 2010 and amended till date, has I met prosecuted one person? in terms of electoral offenses. I don't know whether they have. So the, the problem is not, I agree with them that the problem is not the law, but the problem is the implementation. But the reality also is that we are now seeing impunity upon impunity in terms of our electoral act, in terms of, of, of the design of the electoral system, in terms of voters, in terms of rigging, vote buying. Let me give you for an instance. In, in a kitty state, even in a kitty state, this issue, I think it started from Anambra State. The, not even it started from Anambra State. It's been there. But it became magnified in Anambra, and then we went to Ekiti. 
the issue of boat trading, buying and, 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 <coughs> and, 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 and you know, the issue of boat trading, which we are buying and buying of votes and all those things. We went for a summit in Ocean State when the former IG was there. One of the issues that was raised in a Kitty State when we approached the police officers, why are you not arresting individuals you are clearly seeing um, that they are buying um, um, votes from individuals? And, and he made a slight comment that um, there is no order from above um, to arrest individuals who are clearly uh, in contravention of the Electoral Act. And the question is, under the Electoral Act, there is a crime of inducement. And clearly, vote trading, vote buying or selling is a, is a crime. So there's that problem. There's that problem of process. Um, so if, 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 during the uh, uh, summit in the Ocean State, we, we clearly told the, the IG, you, you should send information down to, to, to the um, uh, officers who are deployed for electoral duty that vote buying constitutes inducement under the Electoral Act and individuals who are found wanting should be held accountable. Is that a problem with our we now know what has happened. Education. Not... Is that a problem of Hello? political education or is it just uh, something that we're used to? I think the problem is, I think the problem is that the, the, the electoral uh, uh, process is designed in a way that it should work. But the, my argument is that politicians have decided that it should not work because uh, when you mix violence and, and, and intimidation, um, then it, you, you automatically get uh, whatever you want. And that is what I'm saying, that since this process has not worked, individuals who, who have tried to desecrate our electoral system have not been held accountable. We cannot wait for INEC, that is even as we speak, unable to conduct effective elections. Because INEC no. has even acknowledged okay. that is a process problem. Okay, uh, Mr. Even Ogo, in the thank last you. election, some, uh, some card readers did not even work effectively. Okay, we'll, we'll, but there we'll is need to, for we'll us to actually to uh, interrogate the, the issue of whether INEC needs to be unbundled. We, 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 we have, that's another you know, conversation that we have had over and over again. But um, uh, I, I come back to the point made the other time. If we had enough political, well, of course, uh, clearly, just as you know, has been said here over and over again, the political class has a way of wanting to always have their way, which is, of course, understandable. I mean, this, uh, you know, it's, it's what they do. It's their interest and all of that. So everyone wants to do what is necessary to do what they need to do. But if people had enough political education, as in Bochy State, where the people said, nope, you're not going to disrupt this process. And so th there was a pushback, and the people, you know, they, they, the villains, so to speak, retracted. If we had enough political education, would we still have the kind of situation we have on our hands? Well, let me say that political education is good, but I insist. The restraint of law is what regulates human conduct and keep in check the propensity to do that which is criminal and unacceptable. The restraint of law and its face, faithful enforcement, the enforcement of law is what does that. If you create a commission, for example, and I hope that this won't be a ding dong affair, an electoral uh, offenses commission. So no, I've, I've even moved uh, away no, no, from I'm, that. I'm just uh, using that as an example. I'm just using that as an example. Mm -hmm. So uh, how are you going to stop them? So a commission would that commission have its own law enforcement agents a, agents? Uh, or are you going to draft policemen to it uh, to be the one to actually apprehend electoral offenders? Well, the, before police, the police have the, the a special, edu special no, election. No, no, no before, the prosecution, before the prosecution. Or just as we have EFCC operatives, uh. are they the ones that will be moving all over the country, you know, in their thousands to apprehend electoral offenders? Or that commission will just be there and then these same police that our that friend in Abuja said refused to arrest, arrest. electoral offenders, those who are buying votes because they had not received allegedly an order, order from, from above. above. Are they the ones to arrest first before handing over the <laughs> policeman? I, I'm telling you, enforce your law. I'm okay. a rule of law person. Abide by the law. Let me respond. Let me read the article by INEC on this particular matter. <laughs> uh, this is what, six months ago. And the chairman of, I'm quoting from the article now, it says, quote, Chairman of Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, 
has said the commission lacks the capacity and resources to prosecute all electoral offenders in the country. So he said this in uh, Cross River State while they were having this two-day workshop for staff of the commission on legal and police officers' prosecution of electoral offenders in the country. Can you see that? A, 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 a confession that we are not going to implement our laws. Your resources are there. The law is an enabler. You have been given those powers. But he just you, said they don't have the resources. What? They don't have the resources because no budget for it. What do you mean? But you don't well, have to resource. No, no, but then, <laughs> no, but then, but, but, but then, capacity. But then, generally, two different. He said, to prosecute, we don't have the resources and capacity to prosecute all. Nobody is saying prosecute all. Start. Start prosecuting to show, to use use some persons as as example, and and so if you say we don't have the resources to prosecute all, and you have not even, even prosecuted no, but, any but at again, all. And, and, in, again, and again, uh, in January 2017. I came across an article uh, in, it was in NAN. There was this group, I think they call them SNC. They were commending INEC for successfully prosecuting 61 electoral offenders. So if they had done 61, that's some. I, 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 I got a report that the guys INEC prosecuted yeah. some electoral offenders, mm -hmm. right? And I'm saying that this current INEC leadership could build on that in budgeting. And, and I'm serious about this. Look, what liberals spoke about is very critical. You are having an election. You envisage in your budgeting that you're going to have pre-election controversies and INEC will become a party. So you budget for that. You already know that you're going to have post-election contestations. So you budget for that. You hire people to... By the way, liberals and I <laughs> have serviced INEC before as lawyers paid by yes. INEC, right? Yes. And I'm saying that in doing that, indeed, the willingness of INEC to implement the laws given to it can be come clear by is budgeting. In other words, in his budget, you have a head for prosecution of but they electoral have a, they have a legal department. Exactly. It's not about having a legal department. You have money voted for it. How you are going to hire staff and all that. Before you start confessing that you, you don't have the resources, mm -hmm. you don't have yeah, the capacity. Another, another I mean, thing, that, yeah, another the angle that, take this yes, on, yes. liberals, take, before take this on. <laughs> yes, before we go, take this on. Um, in the, I don't know how well, since you have the experience, you can educate us here. At what point will you prosecute election offenders or offenses to a, to a place where people will not say you are biased against one party or the other? Yeah, look, that's where the, the that's one problem also that we intentionally create, where you see some commissions. If you create a, a special commission now, who appoints the chairman of the commission? who nominate members of the commission. And so if it is appointed by the ruling party and then they decide to prosecute, you know, maybe a particular party, you now say, well, how about offenders in this other party? But INEC, being an independent body, also independent National Electoral Commission. And that's why I was saying the powers have been donated to INEC. Take up that responsibility. Don't wait to be told. Don't wait to look at somebody's body language. If offenses are committed, irrespective of the political party involved, apprehend this person. And then there's election management team. The police is part of the election management committee. Um, INEC also, the logistic providers and the rest. So what we're saying here is, on the issue of voters' education also, or uh, the police doing its job, before the election, from the article that Chamberlain read from, it was a, it was, um, a seminar mm -hmm. on collaboration. Yeah. At that seminar, what instruction or what did INEC, you know, teach the police in okay. terms let of me read a little more. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me read a little more of it. He says that uh, uh, while uh, he spoke about the preponderance of electoral offenses, he says it makes it practically impossible for the commission to prosecute all those involved in such acts. 
For instance, during the 2011 registration exercise, over 870,000 double registrations took place across the country, and only 200 of those cases were prosecuted because the Commission lacks the capacity and resources to prosecute all such cases. Meaning that they have started with prosecution. prosecution. Right? So why not ask for the resources? Simple. That's the issue. That I'm saying that in budget, that why not, say, why not ask uh, for uh, the resources? That, uh, why not uh, say uh, that uh, we need money to hire this number of prosecutors? I, I Do you know that every year the law school shunned out 8,000 lawyers? They are lawyers who are branching out who cannot even practice anymore because haven't qualified. They don't have placements to go. I, I'm saying that I don't want our institutions Pardon me if I'm angry like this. I don't want the institution to come and say that we can't do it because we don't have the resources. The we don't have the prosecutors. Lawyers are there all, all over the place to, to serve as your prosecutors. So what are you waiting for? And then you also talk Ask about for the money. You also talk Ask about for the, the money. Of have a judges. prosecution department in INEC as part of your legal department. Collaborate with the police every election cycle. Ask for reports of other... How can you have a situation in... in, 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 in in Bedway State, and you, you have 1,000 people burning down 13,000 uh, the, the ele uh, election, materials. election materials for 13,000, 13, yeah. and then you allow that to pass like that because you, you are confessing that capacity. you don't have the capacity. So what do you mean that sorry, you don't have the capacity? Sorry, to add to this quickly, eh? you, you, you find out that if you say, you tell politicians, mm -hmm. you tell the police that we don't have the capacity to prosecute, if this was before the election, what you are telling the politicians is, you can go do your thing. Do it any way you want to do it. We don't have the capacity to hold you responsible. And then this is a collaboration seminar. You're also telling the police, don't bother, because we don't have the capacity. What I should expect at such fora would be, the police, these are your responsibilities in as far as election and election management is concerned. These are the offenses identified. If somebody is soliciting for votes, is an offense. Apprehend such persons. And at the end of the day, after investigation, we want to see reports so that the, the serious ones will take them up. And also, if you decide to, your prosecutor, you say you don't have resources. When INEC decided to do registration, biometric registration, Jagger said, look, we, the electoral register we have, you can't even call a register, but we need resources to ensure that we carry out a registration. And in spite of the hue and cry, but eventually funds were uh, budgeted for, for the exercise. Until then, funds are still budgeted for continuous voters registration. What INEC need to do, oh, we have prosecuted 200, prosecuted 200, but if we have more resources, we can prosecute 400. If we have more hands, we can prosecute 600. It is not to say, well, we, we only have, we only prosecuted 200, and you see, we don't have capacity. What are you telling? The people. Are they suggesting that maybe lawyers need to reduce these prosecution fees? I I let me no, also tell you, no, no, no. we have handled matters for INEC. Very serious INEC, matter. what they do, INEC will fix the fee. They don't even, in some cases, you are not even told what you're going to pay until at the end of the, until they get judgment. And, and so it is not a question of lawyers saying this is what they want to earn. When INEC firm out briefs, they don't, lawyers don't negotiate with them. They fix prices. Okay. And, and so there are even lawyers who are we'll ready. We'll come back to look at the practical cases, perhaps, while you are serviced. And, but Mr. Odubo, what, what's your impression of uh, the goings on? My, my impression is, is uh, um, very simple. Um, there's a saying that you can take the horse to the river, but you will not force the horse to drink from the river. From the, river. the law is there, we concede. ANEC, uh, either by omission or commission, has failed to do the needful. My argument, our argument is simple. We cannot keep waiting for INEC while things are still going wrong. We have written, we have had informal discussion with the police, and we are still waiting because they told us they are going to prosecute, actually, the 323 people who were arrested during the presidential election, and then 700 and something individuals who were arrested during the governorship. I'm also aware that the, the numbers will increase after this supplementary. The reality is that we need, as, as I've said before, probably I'm over, overflogging this issue, but we need to do a review of, of the 2019 general election. And that is why one of the key things that needs to be done in terms of the review is to look at the ability to prosecute individuals who cause electoral violence. What is the law? And how have we uh, applied the law? 
And the fact is that the, the performance is more in the negative than in the positive. If that is the case, then something ought to be done. The issue of appointment, the issue of uh, who appoints them, the issue of the tenure and all those things, we have the National Assembly. This can be debated by Nigerians, and everybody will make an input. That is the responsibility of, of the National Assembly to make, a good, to make law for the good governance of the country. And I think we have to sit down, and there, have, there has to be public hearing. Nigerians will want to say, this is what we want. This is how we want it. And then there has to be a consensus that between the president, between the executive and the, and the legislature before such a commission comes up. But do we need to have a discussion on our elections? Yes. Do we have to have a discussion on electoral reform? Yes. Is there a need to strengthen the ability to punish electoral offenders? Yes. How do we do it? We need to look closely at what is existing now. How do we rejig it and ensure that individuals who should be held accountable should be held accountable? The reality is that there's impunity. The impunity does not just stop only at the level of thugs. The people who sponsor them also should be also be held responsible. And that is what we are saying. That INEC has already considered. I don't think giving INEC 20 billion tomorrow will solve the problem. Because clearly there is that lack of will. There's issue of capacity, but the will is actually not there. So do we need to wait for them? when things are going from bad to worse. All right. I don't think we need to do that. So, I think we need to go back to that discussion again, and yeah. that law again, and ask ourselves, will this do? We'll go back to that when we I come back in a moment. But we'll also find out, has there even been a 2015 audit in the first instance? We'll discuss in 60 seconds. <laughs>